Hey everyone, it's Amanda again, and today I want to do a review of Nothing to Envy, Ordinary Lives in North Korea. I'm trying to read more diversely about um, specifically the Pacific Asian region um, cultures. I don't know that much about the area, I don't know much about the history, I know almost nothing about the Korean War, and those are all things that I want to fix this year, and you're going to see a lot of foreign culture related nonfiction over the course of the rest of the year. Um, I have some Russian accounts that are coming up soon too. Uh, but this one is a tale that is woven through the perspectives of people who have defected from North Korea. And it is their experience honing in really on the 1990s, the 80s, 90s, and then early 2000s. And it is the education system, it's their everyday lives, it's food and shortages and jobs and life there. And I, it touches a little in the beginning about how North Korea and South Korea were split. It talks about Japanese occupation. It talks about influence from China. It also talks about our involvement and Russia's involvement. And it talks about communism and sort of the very brief background on all these things. I would really like to flesh this out a little more because this was a more personal narrative of individuals and their recollections of growing up and living in North Korea and then defecting to South Korea. Um, I don't get a lot of the how this happened because these people really weren't born at that time. This book was a little repetitive in places. If I heard the phrase white rice, a staple of the, the Korean diet one more time, I, yeah, my patience for that was over. And it's almost like each section was written obviously at different times because she, the author, Barbara, had made multiple trips to North Korea. So this was written over time. But that's really one of the very few criticisms I have about the book. And the second is that there were places that were a little repetitive. And and it was always the same thing that was repeated. It was the same concept that, that didn't get sort of edited out. And I don't know if that was to kind of keep the length of the book or if it was just an oversight. Because overall, it was a great read. It was... Um, progressed through time very nicely and showed contrast very nicely. Also showed the, the, the contrast between North Korea and the rest of the world over time. So it showed how this, this divide started happening and then how that sort of separation started getting larger and larger and how their, their culture is kind of stuck in the 50s. And this individual reasons that people defected and little things that made them realize that what they're seeing may not be true and how a lot of the population the defectors that she interviewed um, or refugees, whatever the proper term you want to call them would be, the individuals, um, what little realizations that they saw that made them question what they were being told about the outside world. And I think that was really interesting. But another thing that I didn't know, I just there's so much about their culture that I just wasn't aware of. And this book, it gives you a very good global idea of what it's like to have grown up in North Korea and it talks specifically about the famine of the 1990s and how as the different communist regimes became more capitalist how their support sort of dwindled and how South Korea's um, exports and economy really started to pick up after the war and how at first they were pretty even and and then North Korea was kind of ahead because they had heavy support from other countries and then South Korea became more independent and uh, autonomous and could support itself and began sort of developing its own new identity and how North Korea never really got to that point and they couldn't be self-sufficient. They couldn't raise enough or grow enough food to support their population. How you, you were told what job you were having and the high, very, very rigid class system that they had and how that evolved over time as well. And and all of these components show the evolution of this country and, and the interaction with the outside world and being an American and not super popular there, I, I find the culture fascinating. And I, I really don't know that much about Korea in general. So I, when I started reading this book, um, one of my coworkers is Korean and we had a really long conversation one day on the way home. Uh, she lives in my area. So while on our walk, we we talked about South Korea and she, she gave me insight into how 
things have shifted for the idea of one Korea and generational differences because she's a little older than I am. So she, I'm in my mid thirties and she's in her early forties and how her, the one generation above and one generation below and, and how individualist South Korea can be coming. And I, I want to read more just about this entire event, the, the Korean War and South Korea and the government situation and politics. And I, this, this book sparked all of that. And, and it's really the perspective that they took within it, the idea of individual lives. One of the things was the perspective of one of the doctors and a teacher that really really just touched me. One was that she saw her patients. She was a pediatrician. Um, she kind of got to choose that, but she didn't really. And the going to work, but never getting paid and that she still did it because she thought she was doing things good for the country, good for the leaders, good for her fellow North Koreans. And then she started seeing the children that she didn't have the medicine to fix because what they need is food and food's the one thing no one has. The same perspective from a teacher who saw her class numbers slowly dwindling during the famine in the 1990s and she knew when the children would get lethargic and they wouldn't have a lunch to bring then and then they would stop coming and they would never be seen again and she knew what would happen to them and also the detachment that you get from that when when you're in the same situation, you're only slightly better off than the same people that you see falling and how you get this detached mentality of survival. And I've seen this in several different war accounts as well where no one who survives are the good people. And not saying that these people aren't good, but that's a, a quote that was used in the novel multiple times by the people who survived this, that the people who share, the people who are giving up theirs to help others are the first to die and the impact that had on them over time to know the th and remember and live with the things that they did to survive and this book sparked an entirely new line of interest for me and i think that's what made it so impactful for me this is a new area and i want to know as much as i can about it and that's both good writing good reporting and good weaving together a lot of individual narratives because this is a very complex topic and that's why I forgive the slight repetition that, that carried through the book, but I would definitely read more by this author and I would definitely, definitely read more on North and South Korea and plan to, one of my, my friend is supposed to give me a list at some point of um, influential Korean works that I should read and I'll share that with you when she does. Anyway, I hope you liked this. And if you have any other um, Asian influenced nonfiction accounts that you would like to share, please leave a comment below. If you've read this, let me know what you thought. I really, really liked this. And so far I've been able to talk about it with the one person because she's the only person that's invested and actually understands what I'm talking about. So if you've, if you've read about this, let me know. We need to chat. <laughs> I will talk with you soon. Bye.